Let me tell you a quick story to show you what I mean. A few years ago, I was planning to sleep early and fix my sleep schedule, but there was still some time before bed. It wasn't really enough time to get some work done, but it was a bit too early to sleep as well. So I decided to get a quick game or two of league in. I started at 6pm and finished literally 10 hours later at 4am. I literally could not stop until I physically burnt out. That didn't feel like a struggle. That didn't feel like work. I didn't need any discipline for that. That's literally the opposite of discipline. That's the power of addiction and one hell of a dopamine loop. Meanwhile, discipline feels like I'm trying to climb a mountain, but I can't breathe and I don't have any legs. Can you imagine trying to live every single moment of your life needing that amount of discipline? Because to me, that sounds miserable. If you look at the people that are the most successful in this world, literally none of them rely purely on discipline. They all like what they do. And after spending some time learning about them, I think they have a program like that early on in life. Let's start with Mr. Beast the biggest YouTuber in the world right now. He started when he was 13, and he spent the past 12 years being obsessed about YouTube. He made hundreds of videos and stuck with it for years before getting a good amount of views. But did you know that the first video that he ever made actually went viral? That must have given him a huge dopamine spike and positive reinforcement to keep on making videos and become a YouTuber. And he's not the only one that got positive reinforcement early in life and became wired a certain way. Recently, I also learned about Prince, one of the greatest musicians of his time. That man was insane. So normally before a concert, musicians normally spend around 15 minutes on the mic check to see if everything's working okay. Not Prince though. He would literally spend 4 hours before the concert playing music. Then he would give a 2 hour concert to 15,000 people, finish that at 12, then go back to his recording studio to work on some more songs. That's not discipline. That's what it looks like when the only thing that makes you feel good is playing and working on songs. Another thing I noticed which he has in common with other people like this is that he started young. Both his parents were musicians as well and I'm pretty sure he got a lot of positive reinforcement for music early in life. If you have a look at Mozart, it's a similar story. His father started teaching him when he was 3 and he had thousands of hours of experience by the time he was a teenager. Taylor Swift as well. She spent countless hours practicing and her parents were supportive as well. It's not just musicians either. One of the biggest actors in Bollywood, Ranveer Singh, also has a similar story. One time at a party when he was a kid, he got a ton of praise from dancing and being the center of attention. He knew from that moment on, he wanted to do something which would give him the same feeling. So he became an actor. And from first hand experience, there's my sister who's definitely not sitting right next to me right now. She's had positive reinforcement from the time she was born. If she heard a song and started dancing, she was encouraged. Whenever we saw a movie on TV and she would get up to dance or perform, she would always get positive reinforcement. She even did fashion shows at home with multiple outfit changes and made us be the audience. So it's not surprising that she wants to become a famous Bollywood actor and wakes up at 5am to spend a few hours working on the skills needed to become one. It's the same story with the world's best chess players as well. The people at the highest level enjoy doing what they do. They enjoy doing what other people see as work. What people see as work, they see as play. And if that work brings you the most dopamine and gives you the most joy, why would you want to do anything else? If you don't do anything else and spend all your time having fun and working, then you're gonna get pretty damn good at that thing. That doesn't mean every little thing they do is enjoyable. That just means the overall positive is so much bigger than the negative that it's something that you can get over. The only problem is, not everyone gets lucky and gets programmed to do something that helps you in life. Like me, for example. I remember that at the start of a new class in uni, the teacher would sometimes get us to stand up in a circle and everyone would go around and say their names and their hobbies. And everyone would say something like, I like to volunteer at a children's hospital and save lives. <laughs> and all I could think was like, shit, I only watch YouTube videos. That's so lame. I can't say that. So I would say some bullshit answer like, I like sports. So what if you're like me and you're programmed to watch anime, YouTube, switch between 3 or 4 tabs of social media, and play video games? Are we screwed? Does Lord YouTube own my soul forever? Hell no! Here's what I'm doing to go from addicted to YouTube, to being addicted to the work that actually gets me closer to my goals and who I want to be. But first, you need to know about one of the most important things that can literally decide your entire life. Dopamine baseline theory. You see, your brain is a dopamine optimizing machine. Now, if we were still hunter-gatherers, that would be okay. All the biggest companies in the world literally design their products to give you the most dopamine they possibly can. They have teams of scientists and literally the smartest people in the world optimizing every single little detail. Because the more dopamine they give you, the more you use their thing. The more you use their thing, the more money they make. You are literally being hacked by the smartest and richest people in the world. And you know what? It's still your fault. 
Because what's the alternative? You just accept that you'll be a slave to cheap dopamine for the rest of your life and never even try? That's just pathetic. Here's how I'm using dopamine theory to make work become as fun as playing video games. Imagine this is your dopamine system. It goes from minus 100 to 100. And let's say your baseline is zero. If your dopamine level is higher than your baseline, you feel good. If it's lower than your baseline, you feel bad. And if we were still hunter gatherers, getting something like fruit from the wild would give you like 30 dopamine. But since you would actually have to go outside and get it yourself in the wild, it would be like 20 difficulty. Hunting a wild animal would be a lot more dangerous, so let's say it's 80 difficulty. But since it also helps increase your status in society and it tastes good, let's say it would be around 90 dopamine. Most of the time, if you want to feel good and increase your dopamine, you need to do something hard. And since there aren't that many ways to get dopamine, you don't really overload your system. But now, it's completely different. If you want dopamine, you can open up YouTube and get 90 dopamine with just one difficulty. You can open up TikTok as well, it's not even hard. It gives you like 95 dopamine and only costs 1. You can play video games and increase your wealth and status in game as well. That'll give you the same feelings or close enough to the same feeling of doing it in real life. It's so much easier to increase your status in game as well. Plus, everyone else can see it as well through your gear and level. You can make money a lot easier in game as well. And there's things like guilds for community and friends. I know how addicting that can be because I've spent years playing MapleStory. And if you want to make money or build a business in real life, it's like 90 difficulty takes so much time and effort and you only get something like 50 dopamine while you're working on it. And if you want to increase your status in real life, that's super difficult as well. Let's say that's 85 difficulty and 60 dopamine. Your lizard brain isn't stupid. Why would I do something which has 90 difficulty and only gives 50 dopamine when I can do something which has 1 difficulty and gives 95 dopamine? Why would you actually try to increase your wealth, your connections, your status in real life where you can play a game or watch a video and get 80% of the same feelings. It's because deep down, you already know the answer. Cheap dopamine is hollow. It doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't make your life better. It tricks you into thinking you're making progress when you're actually going backwards. And it comes with a bar of guilt next to it. So if you do something like watch YouTube, you get like 90 dopamine by spending one difficulty, but there's also 40 points of guilt right next to it. And I'm sure you've noticed if you ever spend a lot of time chasing cheap dopamine that after a while it doesn't even feel good. But for some reason you can't even stop even though you feel like shit. Wasn't it meant to make you feel good? So why do you feel like crap but you still can't stop? That's because your baseline gets shifted up. So if your baseline was zero before and you always do things that give you a super high amount of dopamine, your baseline gets shifted up. Let's say your baseline goes to 50. Now when you use cheap dopamine, you still get 90 points. But since your baseline is 50, you only get 40 points of feel good instead of 90. And unless you're doing something that always gives you 50 dopamine, you're gonna feel bad. And other than cheap dopamine, there isn't really any other way to stay at that level. That's how you get trapped in a cheap dopamine loop and stop caring about anything else. I don't know how that is for you, but when it happens to me, I can literally feel my brain turning into mush. I can't even think properly, I have no motivation to do anything else other than put on the next video. And since you feel guilty, you try and drown that out by even more cheap dopamine which obviously doesn't work. You might be thinking, but Aro, what about the people that make money and are successful by playing video games? You dumbass, they're not successful because they play video games. They're successful because they make content around video games. They don't just consume, they don't just watch or play games. They're on the creator side. Or they're so good that they get paid to compete. Nobody remembers the person who watches a Mr. Beast video. They only remember Mr. Beast. You get a million times more value from creating things than you do consuming things. And the difference between creating and consuming things is like looking at a photo of a cliff and actually climbing it. The thing about treating yourself by watching a video, playing a game or scrolling on social media is that no matter how hard you try, there's always a chance you're going to end up in a dopamine loop. And if you keep shifting your baseline, you won't ever get a chance to get to a stage where you actually enjoy working as much as you enjoy watching YouTube videos. And when you're a few years older and look back, you'll realize that time went by surprisingly fast. Like someone had pressed fast forward. But you didn't really become the person that you thought you would be. You didn't really accomplish much and you don't have much to show for it. Because you were too busy indulging in cheap dopamine. The price of cheap dopamine is the life you could have lived. If you want to achieve greatness, you need to become addicted to the work that gets you there. The only way I know how, which is working for me, is to get your baseline dopamine lower by getting rid of all cheap dopamine. When your baseline dopamine requirements are lower, even if you don't get that much dopamine from something, you still feel good. For example, if your baseline is 50, doing work costs like 30 difficulty and it gives you 50 dopamine, which is your baseline. So you end up with zero. You don't feel good from working, 
There's a lot of friction and it's a struggle. After your baseline dopamine goes to zero, it still costs 30 difficulty. But now you actually feel good by the 50 dopamine that you get. And you know the funny thing? Normally a 50 point dopamine level would only be 50% of how good you feel. But if you get rid of all the other stuff that spikes your dopamine above 50, 50 is the max you'll feel. And since dopamine is relative, that 50 point dopamine level you get by working will become the thing you like doing the most. And you remember that bar of guilt that was next to cheap dopamine? That gets replaced with fulfillment and satisfaction. So even though the amount of dopamine you get might never be as high as cheap dopamine, the amount of relative feel good and satisfaction is definitely higher. As long as you don't use cheap dopamine, spike your levels again and ruin your baseline, you should keep enjoying the work. And the longer you're in this stage, the more positive reinforcement you get for working, which increases your work capacity and how much you actually enjoy work. And as Alex Hormozzi says, high performers don't have something you don't. They lack something which you have which is an off switch. Anything that's a waste of time or a dopamine trap is an off switch. So any social media, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, if you use them without thinking, they're all off switches. One of the biggest off switches that I've gotten rid of that literally saves my entire day was having something that took way too long to make for breakfast. So before I would put things like tenders in the oven or make pasta and while it was being made and while eating, I would watch YouTube. The whole thing would take 45 to 50 minutes from start to finish. Now I switch to things I can make and eat within like 15 minutes, like oats, oat cake, wheat bix or protein cookie and fruit. That one change is responsible for saving my entire day because sometimes I would have like five minutes left of something I was watching and only like two more videos open. And I would think that it's okay, it's only like five minutes of a video and two other videos. I'll start work after watching this, but then I'll get stuck in like a dopamine loop and I would end up watching YouTube for like the entire day, which is fucking insane. Another off switch was looking at the time. So now if I wanna work on something and I wanna focus, I just put my window in full screen so I can't see the time and I don't keep looking at it and wondering how long I have left. No more opening and browsing YouTube as a default either. You can't be tempted to watch something if you don't know what exists. If you don't want to sacrifice the things that make you feel good now but don't actually take you towards your goals, you don't have to. As long as you don't complain that you didn't get what you want or didn't become who you wanted to be. It reminds me of a famous quote from the author Kipling which basically goes, if you didn't get what you want, you either didn't want it enough or you tried bargaining over the price. When my alarm rang at 3.45 a.m. and my eyes were stuck together and I wanted to go back to sleep and I was thinking, if I sleep for just like one and a half more hours, I'll still wake up at 5.30 a.m. That's still early. This exact quote popped into my head and all the people that I look up to, including my future self, would get up. There's also something sneakily dangerous about cheap dopamine I didn't realize for a long time. It actually reduces your desire to want the things that you actually want. So all you end up caring about is cheap dopamine. Sometimes it can feel like you need to watch that video. You need to play another game and finish on a win. You need to feel good. And it feels like that feeling will last forever. But you know what? No urge lasts forever. When you're trying to get rid of your off switches, you also need to be doing the thing that you actually want to do. Because if you don't do it, how are you meant to get positive reinforcement for it? And the more positive reinforcement you get, the more addicted you become. And you know what? It's not going to be easy, especially in the start it probably will feel like pushing a boulder up a hill. You probably will need some discipline for those times. But once things start picking up, you'll realize that you don't actually need level 100 discipline 100% of the time. You only need like 30 to 40% of discipline when things are hard and before you start getting positive reinforcement to keep you going. There's a popular saying that people like to quote and it's that discipline eats motivation for breakfast. I want to add something to it. Discipline eats motivation for breakfast but addiction runs laps around discipline and feels good about it. 